Jeff Jarrett, welcome to Straight to Hell. What is it, above all else, that you love about professional wrestling? It's a deep uh, start, I know. The, 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 boy, you're really going right for the jugular, Ross. Can't you get <laughs> like a little nice and easier across the pond and you can say, so Jeff, how's your day going? <laughs> I could do that, but time is of the essence. I can say, how's your day going? And have you had your tea this afternoon? But you don't go, you just like throw the sheets away and here we go. No, We're in yeah. there, Jeff. There's no foreplay here. What is it you love about pro wrestling? <laughs> oh, man. The emotion, the passion. Um, I, I think a lot of things go into professional wrestling, but, um, you know, we, we can take the business component. I can talk to you from a friend's perspective, from a promoter's perspective, maybe even an in-ring talent. But at the end of the day, the one thing that sort of brings us all together uh, is we have a, a real passion uh, for this industry. And I think no matter what role you are in, whether you're making a living out of it or you're outside and spend your money on it or all points in between, it's that passion. That is a lovely answer. I always like to ask this because we need to find out what sort of perspective you're coming from when it comes to sending things, your pet peeves about professional wrestling straight down to hell. So whether it be chance, certain moves, angles you've been a part of in the past, anything you want to send down to hell to rot for the rest of eternity, what would the first one be? Boy, I'm telling you, you're going right for it. You know, <laughs> my, 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 my PR folks who put this together, and, and I know that this is a much broader situation, and I appreciate you having me on, but we have the show next Friday in Dallas, and so uh, I would, uh, I'll get in trouble if I don't start talking about Friday. No, I'm kidding with you. Um, wow. First one would have to be just a, a real, maybe this is my upbringing, the old school, what do you call a good guy in wrestling? A baby face. Okay. Have you ever called it a face? Yeah. Don't ever do that with me. Oh, why is that? Oh, it, because it's it, it, it sounds so, so, look, you're British. It's not proper. But, but you know, it's baby face and heel. And I think when people call it, some people call it, oh, the babies. Or others say, oh, oh the face. No. It's a baby face and heel. Maybe that's a little, so uh, the, the generally speaking, that probably at the very top, Ross, straight tail, but it, it's like guys that come in and start c talking carny, and that is so out of date. It's like, dude, what are you talking about? But, you know, anyhow, that, that kind of butchering insider talk. Maybe is, this if, by, is this by people like me who are on the outside or by people on the inside as well? Does it go that oh, far? Both, both, that uh, literally both. Oh, this you're pulling the good stuff out of me, but yeah. <laughs> it's to your also what I'm saying. Yeah, what? definitely speaking good and proper and getting terminology right makes absolute sense. Yeah. Yeah, that. Okay. I good. just never thought it would be a thing. Just say it's the differentiation between face and right. baby face. Uh, see, it, like a pet peeve is 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 kind of a personality. Look, is it the end of the world if somebody does this? No, but you're asking me what a pet peeve, you know, one of my pet peeves is, it's, come on. If you're going to act like you, you know how to talk proper, don't butcher it up. It's 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 like a seven-year-old kid who's learned the curse word for the very first time, and he says it completely out of context, and you look at him and you go, oh, that's cute, but he, he don't even know what he's saying. It's It's one of those deals. Massive. Right, so there's the first thing going down to hell. I can see that thing over your left shoulder there. Am I right in thinking that maybe Matt Cardona could be someone who could go down to hell? Now, see, I see where you're going with this now. <laughs> hiding the interview. You're wanting me to dump on, see this right here on my right shoulder, these two action figures? Yep. I'm in business with that clown, as Nick <laughs> Aldis likes to refer to. He's a clown, all right, but he um, has developed uh, an incredible, uh, off of his passion, his his passion for action figures has turned into a massive business and um he came out of the gate and uh, me and conrad thompson action figures uh they're going to be hitting stores before you know it but uh you know Car cardona um you, you want me to give you a cardona a, a pet, pet peeve about cardona yeah big time go on when when, when he gets on his soapbox and and starts bragging about I call it, oh, you're actually going to work now? Well, bravo. 
you're actually taking the control of your career and making decisions for yourself and uh, taking the bull by the horns and forging forward in your career. You want to be applauded for that. But look, in, in all reality, I, I, I call him this. He's a product of the WWE from the time he first started watching wrestling and then he broke in and he worked and they literally do everything for you. They, they tell you where to go, when to go, how to go what to do all, all you know, it, it, it's just the nature of that machine. And so that's the culture he was, you know, born and raised in. I was not born and raised in that. And, and, you know, a, a lot of folks weren't. So anyhow, maybe if you're trying to dig something out of me and Cardona, Ross, I see how you're going. You're guiding this. Hey, I'm a big fan of your po podcast with Conrad. I learned from the master when it comes to guiding a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> But it feels to me, just as an outsider looking on inwards, that you might be angling for potentially yourself being the guy to take that title off Cardona. Is that the case or is that not the case? And look, have I ever lied to you? Personally, me? No, never. Okay. So this is the first time we've ever spoken together, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why would you say that? I, he He's still the champion off of the Crockett Cup. So, again, you're putting... Words in my mouth. You're guiding the interview. Um, you guys call them presenters over there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see how you're presenting this. <laughs> <laughs> I just hear all the fight and talk, Jeff, and I'm just thinking, oh, I think maybe the fight is maybe still burning. We'll get the cowboy hat, we'll get the big jacket on, and we'll get down to fighting. Well, the last outlaw appeared in GCW, and uh, I took on Effie, and Effie uh, went down like a clown that Cardona is. And I, I love how Nick Aldis called him a clown. So <laughs> my, 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 my son's running around the house calling uh, Cardona. Cardona's a clown. Nick Aldis said it. So we're having fun. <laughs> so we need to get back to some more general straight to hells, if that's okay with you. Any more sort of general pet peeves about professional wrestling? That's Matt Cardona dealt with. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You've checked that box for the interview. <laughs> uh, um, I know that there are times when it's not appropriate to wear a championship around your waist. I, I get that. I'm not saying you should wear a championship or else if you're walking down with a suit and towel, that's probably not appropriate. But when you are going to the ring and you are in a championship match and you have the option either to put it over your shoulder or wear it around your waist, it, it, it goes without saying, I think, A, I think it hurts your mystique as a champion that you're just sort of flopping along or carrying your hand, but also B, I think it's disrespecting, you know, years ago, there was a big to do about all oh, the belts, just a prop. Yes, it may be a prop, but it's the main prop. And, it, and specifically it is the prop in a championship match. So not respecting by, by not wearing it in the appropriate uh, it, it, it is, is, is that drives me crazy as a, not so much, I mean, as a talent, yes, and I'm not saying so much as a fan, but as a promoter, and you're putting that character or that talent in that spot, um, give it a little respect. I think it adds to the element of the champion versus challenger. What would you say to someone sort of hugging the – oh, my God. Look at Sorry you. about this, Jeff. I've just punched so my microphone. I got you so nervous, Ross. <laughs> A little late in the evening over there, so uh, no telling what you've been into more than more than uh, hot tea. But uh, that's I am, okay. I am from I am from Newcastle, so it's probably on brand. Um, I was going <laughs> to say, what about someone who was hugging the title without knocking the microphone, hugging the title like Gollum to sort of add uh, importance to it and how desperate they are to keep a hold of it? Going to the ring or yeah, after? They're going to the ring. Yeah, I just don't think it. It I don't think it fits appropriately. I don't. Th I don't think that's the time or place to do it. Now, when you win it or recapture it or win it for the first time, sure, that's great emotion, and I think it can become natural. But walking to the ring, being prepared for battle, being prepared for the match, if you're the champion and it's appropriate, put it around your waist. I heard a great line from Don West, I think it was. It was one of your matches against Sting where you're defending the title, and I think he said something along the lines of, "You thought I think the belt is part of your attire." And I guess that's sort of what you're conveying here. Just, and I guess that just makes sense. And it does make it feel the part, if that makes sense. Like just sort of seeing the belt around your waist. In my childhood memories of watching, gosh, you name it, Jerry Lawler, Ric Flair, uh, Nick Bockwinkel. Um, I could go through several of the world champions. Just the swagger of a world champion walking the aisle with the belt around their waist. It adds to the mystique. It adds to the drama. It adds to the emotion. And it's something that, that again, I think it shows proper respect 
to the championship, which in turn, I think resonates with the fan base, maybe subconsciously, but, but I, I think it's taking something away from the fan. If you don't show it the proper respect. So it must get you really riled up to see a certain big dog potentially dragging it behind him like a bag of... I'm guiding the interview again, Jeff. I'm guiding it again. <laughs> oh, man, you sure are. You're walking <laughs> right into this. <laughs> well, th this is real simple, but it just came up in conversation. We did a podcast, uh, and, and Ross, you're going to get in trouble from a PR guy. Friday, April 1st, Dallas, it's on the Fight app, streaming for your side of the pond. Uh, so... Uh, so seven o'clock. Anyway, it's on, on demand myself, Regal, a, uh, hometown, not yep. hometown, but uh country favorite. Over there a bit. Uh, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. North, right. Uh, yeah. Northwest yeah, yeah. Tees, yeah. 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 Um, anyway, Regal, Jeff Hardy, myself, Eric Bischoff, Conrad Thompson, and more surprises are in Gillies, uh, next Friday. But my third one would be when talent, again, this is the promoter camp when they arrive at the arena and you, they have, a job to do. And they say, Oh, I, I can't do that. I didn't bring this set of clothes or I, I forgot the title or I forgot this. I forgot that or some kind of excuse that they can't do their job other than just saying, I don't want to do it. Can we talk about something else? They beat around the bush and come up with 15 excuses. So I'll say excuses drive me absolutely bananas and always have. And I was taught by grand, my grandmother, so many different lessons, but she's like, you're so much better off just being forthright and transparent and say, Hey, can, you know, look, I'm guilty of it at, through the years as well. But in my promoter years, you, you can, you read through so many things and go, now, wait a minute, just because you don't want to do it. Don't give me 15 excuses or don't say, Hey, my flight or, or my dog or, or whatever it is. No excuses. Okay. That's something we can take forward in life, Jeff, just being forthright. And I need to be forthright and saying, thank you for your time this afternoon. It's been brilliant. I, I appreciate it, my man. Let's do this again. And and I'm going to take you straight to hell because I, on our closing, we got a minute or two. I'm going to go over. What is the one pet peeve you have with guests? Time constraints. <laughs> <laughs> slap nut. listen up slap nut. <laughs> jeff if you would love to do it again i would also love to do it again but i fully understand you're a busy man who a lot of people want to speak to so i very much appreciate for your time uh Cheers, thank you brother. very much anything Have else you want to plug before we go friday april 1st my world drops every tuesday your folks in the, the united kingdom are massive supporters of my world and we really really appreciate that me and conrad do and so we're looking forward to getting over you in your neck of the woods so to speak uh you never know 2022 could be an interesting year for my world in the uk